Greetings War Thunderous, this is Longshot with you again. This video looks at both the Typhoon Mark 1A and Mark 1B late, covering tactics to help you get the most out of these planes when flying them in RK battles. I'll start with the Mark 1A. It's a Tier 2 plane with a current RK battle rating of 2.7, and it's armed with 12 light machine guns mounted on the wings. Like the Hurricane it has unusually thick wings, but it's a bigger plane with a far more powerful engine. Let's look at the armour. The pilot's pretty well protected, uh, with a plate directly behind him, another in front, along with uh, bulletproof glass, and also some armour behind the propeller cap, protecting the engine. Next I'll bring up the internals, and the main thing I'm looking at here is the location of the fuel tanks, out in the wings. Along with uh, leading edge tanks that will be highly exposed in the head-on. There's also a huge coolant reservoir right under the engine, that looks likely to be easily damaged as well. Alright, time for a test flight. To start, let's look at the roll rate. It's fairly sluggish. Very sluggish, in fact. I'll throw the plane into a horizontal turn to get a feel for the strength of its elevators. I'm looking to see how much speed it loses in the turn, and how quickly it turns, going by whether it can catch its smoke trail. Which it cannot. Not even close. This simply is not a turn fighter. But I'll keep the turn going to see how much speed it loses and it will stabilise at around 290 km an hour, which is fairly average. It also took quite a while to get down to that speed, so its energy retention isn't too bad. OK, so its elevators and ailerons are pretty ordinary. How about the rudder? I'm hitting left rudder and up elevator together, and the elevator seems stronger. The plane wants to pitch up more than it wants to pull to the left. I'm continuing up into a climbing spiral, which is very steep due to the weak rudder, hence the plane loses speed quickly, and once at low speed it can barely turn at all. It really does turn into a brick. So as a dogfighter the plane kinda sucks, which is immediately presenting a bit of a problem as it has a dogfighter's short range weapons that require a decent length burst in order to cause damage. It's a heavy cumbersome plane with the weapons of a light and agile plane. Unless its target's flying nice and straight, the Tiffy 1A will get a lot of assists and very few kills. Anyway, let's test its high speed handling. Putting the plane into a dive, as it accelerates I'll see what happens to its roll rate. And it was already pretty slow, and past 500 kilometers an hour it starts to stiffen up even more. Past 600, and it's very sluggish now. The rudder is almost useless at these speeds, and uh, tracking a target with the mouse results in the instructor lifting the nose severely. The high speed handling on this plane is really quite bad. Nevertheless, I'll see how it goes in a zoom climb which I started from an altitude of 850 metres and a speed of nearly 800 kilometres an hour. Past 2,500 metres and it starts to lose speed rapidly. At around 3,000 metres I'd normally be looking to level the plane off for a respectable gain of over 2 kilometres, but I'll take it up to stall speed and see if I can hammerhead the plane. And it actually turns over fairly quickly. It takes a while to get the reticle back under control and lined up with the mouse cursor. So, usually in my testing it becomes pretty obvious what tactics I should use with a plane, but the Tiffy 1A just doesn't seem to be that good at anything. It's a poor dogfighter. It can accelerate to high speeds, but its handling at those speeds is abysmal, and it's armed with guns that need long accurate bursts at close range to destroy other airplanes. It's basically a flying contradiction. The exposed frontal fuel tanks catch fire easily, and this plane rarely ever puts fires out, so you really can't use it for head-ons either. Plus it makes hunting bombers quite dangerous. Nevertheless, for the sake of science, I'll uh, give it a go. I'm using stealth ammo with my conversion set to 200 metres in this battle, though 300 is probably just as effective. As usual, I'll climb at the outset. Though as this is a light vehicles battle, I expect all the action to be down at ground level. The plane climbs best at a speed between 240 and 250 kilometres an hour IAS, though that'll only get you to 3,500 metres from a 2,000 metre spawn in two wet periods, which is a pretty mediocre climb rate. The wet boost on this plane is actually fairly small, only adding about 5% additional power to the engine, unlike many other planes which get more like a 20 or 25% boost in arcade. OK, there's a couple of bombers up high, the Yak-1's climbed as well, and lower down there's a BF-110 who looks like he's heading straight at me. Yep, I'll dodge his head on, and then run to escape both the 110 and the Yak. Look at that uh, really slow snap roll. I'm not going to bother contesting for altitude control in this battle, uh, as the Yak outclasses the Tiffy in every way, except outright speed. 
And as it's a light vehicles game, there's really nothing much to be gained by fighting to be up there. Let's see if I can hit this Henkel 112. Just a hit. I'll try for a shot at the P38. Nope, better to avoid a head on. Okay, now I'm out the other side of the battle, and my tail is clear. Right. This is such a clumsy plane, it really is. Come on, straighten up. Okay. The P38 and 112 are still around. Dog fighting at ground level. I'll see if I can get some shots in, but I'm too late in the 38. The 112 is behind me. I might get clear and reset and try again. Right, a PBY. With any luck, I might fluke a pilot kill or a fire. Nope, just scratched his paint. Rather than fly into that furball, I might loop back and try again on the PBY. This is a bad angle. And yep, another hit. Into a high yo yo. See if I can get a third shot at him. But he's dead before I get the chance. Looking behind me, there's a fresh stream of enemy planes arriving. Notice how all of my turns are loops or Immelmans. I'm doing everything possible to keep my speed high, as my plane can't compete in a low-speed dogfight. Can I take this Junkers 88 down? Long stream of steady shots. No, can't really do much damage. Over into a high yo-yo, but he's down, and that's assist number four. And this is really typical for the Tiffy Mark 1A, in my experience. Hmm, a 109 and a couple of friends. Looks like it's lining up for an attack on the P36 though here. Come on, hold steady. Nope, the slow roll rate has prevented me from getting a gun solution. Up into another Rimmelman. Isn't this fun? Just hanging around trying to get shots at things. And scratching their paint yet again. Someone has to get the assists, I guess. May as well be me. Another Rimmelman. Let's see if I can get another shot at the E3, who's climbing right in front of me. Could this be a kill? What was I thinking? Of course not. Assist number five. Against biplanes, a bank of light machine guns is deadly, but they're simply not effective in short bursts on monoplanes. There's a reason why the British dropped them in favour of 20mm cannon but I'm not giving up yet. Looks like I might be able to get a shot at this 110. And those 110s are quite fragile now, no longer the brick houses they used to be. It's holding nice and still for me. Come on, stay there. And I fluke a pilot kill. Finally I'm on the scoreboard. Right, who's next? A P40? Right, okay. A deflection shot. Does nothing. But he also is flying fairly straight, and I'm on his tail, right near convergence range. Come on, hold still. You're on fire. Don't take my kill, Buffalo. Yes, kill number two. This plane is unstoppable now. Okay, I'm getting a bit carried away. The truth is, except for when you get very lucky with a snapshot, the only time you can expect to shoot a plane down with a Tiffy 1A is when it's flying in a straight line as those planes were. I'll show you a bit more of this game as I reached the battlefield in time to meet this massive wave of enemy fighters and things got a little hectic. I'm approaching high speed hoping for a shot at either 190 or a Spitfire, mindful that plenty of other enemies are around. And the Spitfire holds nice and still, he's got tunnel vision there and flies straight long enough to give me a third kill, demonstrating the value of stealth ammo as well. Now I'm looking to get the hell away from here as I'm surrounded by enemy fighters. Bit of a snap roll to dodge incoming fire, and I need to manoeuvre as I have a bandit right on my 6, an MC200. I'm not going to shake him off any time soon. But I can't let the, those cannon equipped planes get a shot at me. I told you it would get a little hectic, they're everywhere. I'm spamming wep like crazy to keep my speed high and avoiding any horizontal turns that would slow me down. Speed is my only asset in this situation. The 200 still shadowing me. I just keep looping around to make it difficult for him to get a steady shot at me. And although I'm not going to outturn any of these planes with these constant loops and nibblemans, the speed of the Tiffy in these manoeuvres is keeping me out of their guns and just buying me time. Just ducking under some more cannon fire here. 
The longer I survive, the more chance that friendlies will come to the rescue. Speaking of which, a few have arrived now, and suddenly it looks like I'm in the clear. I can even take a shot at that MC200 that was tailing me for so long. Except in all the excitement, I've forgotten to reload. And that looked like a certain kill, too. Oh well. I guess I could always take another shot at a Catalina. Yep. All the enemy fighters are off busy doing other things. Okay. Long and accurate burst coming. Aiming for the fuel tank just inboard of the right engine. And nothing. Another high yo-yo, and then there's no time for a deflection shot on a hurricane. Oh, there is time, sorry, for a deflection shot on this hurricane that yields nothing because the game comes to an end. And unsurprisingly, I got the on-hand award. So in a game in which I was heavily involved, I managed 31 hits for 5 criticals and 7 assists, along with 3 kills against straight flying targets. And that's pretty much about the best you can expect from a TV Mark 1A. I could probably have left it there, but I thought I'd show you an excerpt from one more battle, this time a Krinsk uh, domination. I'd climbed up into the clouds at the start, out of which I'm now diving to attack this BF-110. And it so happened that there was an enemy MiG-334 lurking up in the cloud layer as well, and I kind of lost track of him. Anyway, I managed to rip the wing off the 110. I'm into a zoom climb when the MiG pounces. There he is, right in my tail. It's got me dead to rights, so I pull into a hard elevator and rudder turn to deny him a gun solution and hope for a overshoot, which didn't happen. But fortunately for me, he's banked his plane and he's using elevator only. If he'd used the stronger rudder on that plane, he'd easily outturn me. But as it is, we're pretty evenly matched. And we're into a bit of a death spiral. I'm trying to remember to drop into a diving turn now and then to keep my speed up, because I know how sluggish this plane gets if it slows down. The previous battle showed a, a chaotic furball, but apart from a persistent MC200, nobody really latched onto me for any length of time. But this, however, has quickly developed into a full-on duel against a plane capable of dropping me with a brief snapshot if I give him the chance. And I've been trying to lead him upwards into a gentle climbing spiral, but so far there's no hint that he's running low on energy, and I'm certainly not gaining any ground in our turning contest. And this could have gone on for quite some time. And then a friendly uh, P-400 decides to crash the party. First the MiG ignores him, and we continue in our circle of death. It does seem as if I'm slowly getting away from him now. Oh, goodness, it's painfully slow. And then the P-400's back for another try from underneath, and the MiG decides to break off. He's out of the turn and goes into a split S, and that gives me a chance for a reversal. So often, whoever breaks first loses in this kind of dogfight. So our positions are reversed, and instead of him nearly getting a gun solution on me, it's me who almost, but not quite, has the gun solution on him. That rolling movie may have actually uh, gained him a bit of ground, but then he lost it by climbing right in front of me. So I can start to tickle his paint, the first of many hits I'm going to land on his plane. We're out of sync now, which allows me to land a succession of deflection shots, like that one. And somehow around this point, uh, the P-400 manages to begin to lose position. Eventually he ends up with the MiG on his tail. Yep, that was another hit. And this went on for quite some time. In fact, I'll skip ahead by 30 seconds to avoid boring you to death. The MiG's damaged the P-400 and is trying to line up the kill shot. While I'm still landing hit after hit after useless bloody hit, this really is death by a thousand cuts. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Maybe I should just ram him and be done with it. No, up into a high yo-yo. Drop down again. One more pass might get the job done. Let's see. Come on. Come on. At last. And I was very lucky to survive those trees. Well, after a few battles like this, I'd had about as much of the 1A as I could stand. I dare say you have too. So let's move on to the 1B late. This is a tier 3 plane. 
with a current RK Bell rating of 4.7. As you can see, the light machine guns are gone, and in their place are 420mm Mark II Hispano cannon. There's a Tiffy 1B as well, a premium plane, with a rating of 3.7, but I don't own it, so I can't cover it in this video. The armour is identical to the 1A, no differences at all. The internals are also the same, with the fuel tanks in the same locations, including the leading edges on the wings, and yes, they're just as flammable. The roll rate's the same as the 1A's, and so is its ability to turn using elevators. The rudder is also the same, with the elevator clearly dominant as I put the plane up into a uh, climbing spiral. At low speed this plane becomes uh, quite a sluggish pig as well, losing what limited turning ability it possesses. So far it's looking exactly the same plane as the 1A. And what this test doesn't show is that the engine is a little more powerful, though I guess it does show it by the climbing spiral going up for longer than I could hold with the 1A. It also has faster acceleration, but unfortunately its high speed handling is just as clumsy as the 1A, so there's no improvements there. But what this plane does have are cannons capable of ripping planes to shreds in a brief snapshot, and that makes a world of difference. In this domination game I have my targeting distance set to 400 meters, and I'm using air targets ammunition. I'm going to climb at the start. It has a similar ideal climb speed to the 1A, and will get you from a 2000 meter spawn to 3800 meters in two weps which at 4.7 is still a fairly mediocre climb rate. In ground strike games you can go bomber hunting in this thing, but that exposes you to faster climbing and more manoeuvrable fighters, not to mention the danger posed by uh, bomber gunners. I actually prefer a similar strategy to the one I used in the first battle with the 1A, hanging at high speed near the fringes of the busiest part of the battle, looking to intercept exposed targets, and then escaping back to friendly territory. My original aim in this battle was to take altitude supremacy, kill whatever bombers spawned in and then look to boom and zoom, but quite a few enemy fighters had decided to climb, and I was forced to retreat. That 109 off to my right has obviously taken the trouble to side climb. I doubt he's going to give up altitude on a whim. His plane's a far superior dogfighter to mine. I certainly don't want to dance with him, and a head-on would be a pure gamble, so I decided to dive away. There's plenty of targets at ground level on this map. Chances are I'll be chalking up kills while he's still circling around up, circling around up there hoping a bomber spawns in. Okay, so here we go. Unfortunately I've wasted a few minutes by climbing etc, but that's 2020 hindsight for you. Right, potential first target in this Focke 490, but I have a very steep angle of approach. And no, I have nothing like the maneuverability needed to get a gun solution, so I'll reset and try again at a slightly lower speed. Alright, I'm not sure how many enemy fighters are still patrolling upstairs. I know the 109 is, obviously. I just need to keep my eyes open and try to literally stay under their radar. Okay, showtime. There's a nice deflection shot lined up, and another. Job done. Let's get out of Dodge City. All it takes is to linger a moment too long in the combat zone, going for one extra turn, and I can be intercepted by an enemy fighter. I need to get in and out again as quickly as possible. Someone's taking long range snipes at me, in fact, with a large cannon. But I'm flying under incoming friendly, so I should be safe. And that should be far enough. Notice I still have 374 cannon rounds despite shooting down two planes and firing at a third. That's one thing I really like about this plane plenty of ammunition. Still a lot of enemy fighters at altitude, too. I'll have to remain vigilant. My main protection is to stay low, stay fast, and avoid getting isolated. Let's see what I can pick up on this run. The KI-61's already under attack, and it's probably a little too elusive for a clean shot. 
so I'll look a little further afield. This Spitfire is unaware of me, I have a nice deflection shot. Now back toward friendly territory and hope for another target on the way out. But no, it's not to be on this occasion. Ah, it looks like one of the fighters at altitude is getting restless, trying to boom and zoom through our spawn. Just taking a quick look around. Yes, I'm clear, but I've looked around for a bit too long and now I've overshot the target. See if I can take him out as he zoom climbs. Not a problem. Okay, down into my next attack run. Once again I'm ignoring some closer targets and going for one a little further back hoping for a secondary target when I extend back towards safety. And I might be able to take out this Bearcat. No, too much risk of friendly fire, plus he's taking me away from the uh, spawn area. Time to gain a little altitude and I may as well reload while I'm at it. Alright, here we go again. This is obviously a very simple tactic. I'm using the strength of the plane, which is its speed and its hitting power, while avoiding exposing its poor manoeuvrability by trying to dogfight. This basic tactic works with the Tiffy 1B late on pretty much any battle type, uh, though air domination can be a struggle if high altitude is contested. Okay, I didn't set up that attack run very well. And I'm taking a bit of a risk going for another target here, as my speed won't be quite as high as I'd like. Plus I'm lifting up to attack that yak. Now I really need to uh, dive out, though I get a shot at this Mustang here on the way. Two criticals, and that'll be enough to kill both planes. And once again I'm running out of the danger zone. That's seven kills and I'm yet to come under any serious attack myself. As long as I stay disciplined I could keep this up as long as I wanted. But keeping up that discipline is the key. It's such a, sim a simple tactic, it's very tempting to just push the boundaries a little. You can see that although the plane is so similar to the Tiffy 1A and its flight characteristics, uh, the weapons really do make a world of difference and totally justifies the higher battle rating in my opinion. It's obviously a far less versatile plane than the Tier 3 Spitfires, but used in a pure interceptor role like this, it can certainly get the job done. As the game's gone on though, my uh, gunnery hasn't been quite as sharp. And I'm getting more criticals now and fewer outright kills with my snapshots. And now I've sprung an oil leak. I really have to be careful or I'll get myself in trouble. Like this Fokov of 190 is, who for some reason ignores me and lets me light him up. But again, that's just uh, another critical. Okay, time for the next attack run. Or so I thought. I suddenly noticed a nearby red dot on the minimap and decided to go evasive in case one of those fighters up at altitude was trying for a boom and zoom. Where is he? Ah, there he is. It seems he's already been shot down, so never mind. Let's crack on. Just waiting for this situation to unfold and a target to reveal itself. They're all hanging back, which makes it a little difficult. I've got to make sure none of them single me out, which that bow fighter is doing, and that was, wow, far too close for comfort. I've obviously gone away from my plan now. I'm starting to improvise, and that's a little dangerous. I have to stay patient. Now anyway, I get a nice shot at the bow fighter on the way out, and I need to retreat and reset once more. Need to reload as well, mustn't forget that. Cost me far too many kills when I do forget. Okay, should be far enough. Someone really should take care of this H6K. I may as well put my hand up. Gotta watch those fighters though. Don't want to be a target for them while they helicopter up. I'm 
Alright, nine kills. Can I make it to double figures? I'm just diving to regain my airspeed. I don't want to be easy prey if one of those fighters comes across. And once again I'm waiting to see how the situation unfolds. But as I do so, the enemy caps the base due to an AAA that nobody's taken out yet. And I let that distract me. I'm heading towards it, and I'm thinking I'll just take it out when someone else does so just before I get there. So I find myself on an attack run with no enemies in the area. But I'm fairly confident that my team will win this game as the enemy's starting to run out of planes. But they still have more than enough in the air to cause problems, and I have to avoid being singled out as a target. The same as I've done all battle up to this point, except for the bowfighter. And just as I feel it's safe to turn and engage, uh, I expect all the enemies to have their own targets by this point, but one of them is in a head-on with me and I lose a wing. I didn't observe the enemy movements closely enough before I turned. If I had, I would have spotted the threat, but this late in the game I'd become a little careless, and I paid the price. So there you have the Tiffy 1A and the 1B late. Both are clumsy planes, uh, with poor maneuverability, an average climb rate, but excellent acceleration and energy retention. The tactics are the same with both planes. Avoid dogfights, look to intercept enemies at a decent speed, and then extend away to keep out of trouble. The weapons, however, make an enormous difference in the effectiveness of these planes. The 1A's bank of light machine guns is an exercise in frustration, or it is in my experience, and it's sufficient for me to keep the plane in mothballs in favour of flying Hurricanes and Spitfires, or better still, my premium D520 and boomerangs. The 1B Late, however, is an excellent plane, simply due to its ability to actually destroy targets in brief snapshots, something the 1A could only dream of doing. Whether you take the uh, 1B late out as the primary plane or a backup, it's a good value and it will serve you well. It simply gets the job done in an uncom uncomplicated way, provided you fly it strictly as an interceptor, and don't try to make it do anything beyond its limited capabilities. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. That's all I have for you in this one. Until my next vid, I'll see you in the skies.